Okay, so we have the ball, oh, key ideas. Constant speed, no friction, and I've given you mg. What other forces must be acting on this? Why can't that be it? If that was the only force, which way would it have to be accelerating? Straight down. Okay, what else are we missing? Normal force, which would be kind of, sort of, I don't know, about like that-ish, maybe? Good. Anything else? No. No friction. It says it's frictionless. Number two says, what's the direction of the net force on the ball? Well, what path is this ball tracing out? In fact, it even says a horizontal circle, so the net force must be toward the center. I'm not going to put that on the free body diagram, though, because it never shows up on the free body diagram, but it is towards the center. Three, how does the magnitude of the normal force, not shown, compare with mg? I've drawn it bigger. Am I right, or is it smaller, or the same size? Hmm. Let's try combining these two forces. Now, this is, again, a strange situation where, even though there's angles, we're not going components. Why are we not going components? Because the circle itself is horizontal, which means I don't want to move away from that. Instead, I'm going to add these two vectors together. How would I add these two vectors together, Kyle? Draw them. I'm going to draw the easiest vector first. Of the two vectors, normal force and mg, which of those is the easiest one to draw? Okay, there it is. What path are we tracing out? Where is my net force pointing? Toward the which means I can't draw a normal force that long because that's not pointing towards the center. And it also means I can't draw a normal force that long. Tell me when to stop drawing my normal force. Right about there. And then I would have FC, which shows up in my vector triangle, but not on my free body diagram. Here's what I want you to notice. Isn't the normal force the hypotenuse? And isn't the hypotenuse always the longest side? So if you're going in a banked corner, or like this, the normal force will always be bigger than mg. If you're ever on a roller coaster where you're going around a tight circle that's banked, you will feel heavier because the chair is having to push up on you with a bigger force than mg. If you're at Playland and you think of it when you're going around a tight circle like that, look for it, feel it through your body. Oh yeah! I feel like I'm getting pushed down. It's because you're getting pushed up. I'm feeling heavier because the normal force has gotten bigger than my normal normal, which is just plain old mg. Kind of nerd trivia, but kind of cool. Actually, it's a really, really good segue. Today, we're going to look at some cool applications. Lesson five, cool applications. The first cool application that we're going to look at is not example one. I'm going to come back to example one. Example one is cool because it's roller coaster loops. In fact, it's one of my favorite applications. But I want to instead go to example two. How many of you have ever seen in a shopping center outside a kiosk or a novelty store a little toy plane on the end of a string that's going around and around and around in a circle at a constant speed? We call that a conical pendulum. If you all look up, here's kind of the same idea, except instead of getting the spin from the airplane's motor, I'm just adding energy to the system. But can you see Takoda upside down? This is an ice cream cone. It traces out of upside down ice cream cone. And it's called a pendulum because it's a mass on the end of a string. So we call this the conical pendulum. We're gonna look at that because on your test, there's either gonna be a conical pendulum or a banked curve. In fact, Kedra, what I'm going to try and convince you today is the conical pendulum and the banked curve, same physics. You'll notice they really start to look similar. Now, there is also a propeller having it come out of the page towards us, but air resistance is canceling out the propeller. So I wrote down here, if we ignore air resistance and the force from the propeller, which balance each other anyway, which of the following is the best free body diagram for the plane? Ironically, you know what this is a good job for? 
I think a free body diagram. So let's, let's label this picture. What are the forces acting on the airplane? Get the obvious one. Then I would go look at my answers and ask, did that get rid of any of them? No. What else? Hydra, you're right. There's a rope tension up and left. Did that get rid of any wrong answer? No. Okay. Hmm. What path are we tracing out? Where is my winning net force pointing? Toward the? But did that show up on the free body diagram? B was asking me to try and put FC on my free body diagram. Nuh-uh. Why is A wrong? What's that outwards force there? That's what a lot of people think are there because they always think when they're moving in a circle, I'm getting pushed outwards and I've tried very hard to convince you you're not. There is no force pushing you outwards. It's your own inertia wanting to keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. The only two forces acting on it are tension and gravity. That's enough to get it to move in a circle. Explain why the others are wrong. We've done that orally, so I'm not going to write it out. But example three says, redraw the force diagram. Okay. And then write out force equations. I realize this is at an angle. Did I say angle? But just like the banked corner, I don't want components because just like the banked corner, the circle itself is horizontal, which matches my components quite nicely. So instead, I'm going to add these two vectors together. How will I add these two vectors? Why, I think I'll draw them. Which is the easiest vector to draw first, Dustin? Tell me when to stop drawing tension. And then I'm going to have FC. Up there. It's too bad Kiefer's not here. Because I would go like this. Color, color, color. And I would notice that theta is between a vertical line and tension. You know what? That's the angle that's between a vertical line and tension. Color, color, color. It's a pretty bad theta. All right. Tension, opposite adjacent to hypotenuse. FC. Opposite, MG. And so really, there are three trig functions or trig equations that I can write. I can write one for sine theta. What does sine theta equal? What over what? More specific in this particular triangle, FC over tension. And then I would probably multiply tension over to the other side and get the FC by itself or whatever. Or... There's also a cosine theta equation hiding in here, which would be what over what? Mg over tension. Or there's also a tan theta hiding here of Fc over Mg. You know what? This equation is a little interesting to me. Just don't circle it, but look at it. Please look at the vector triangle, look at the free body diagram, stay here. I'm going to go back to lesson four. Look at the triangle that we drew for the banked curve. Did we have gravity down, a force going up and slanty, and FC pointing? Isn't the triangle identical to the one you have except tension? And didn't we also have tan theta equals FC over MG pop out of this triangle in the same way. You, I didn't write equations for normal force in MG and FC and MG. I could have, I guess. But I'm going to argue that the banked curve and the conical pendulum, Dakota, it's the same free body diagram, really. Tension, F, and fine. 
but really the physics is very, very similar. Let's do one with some numbers, example three. Dakota, what does example three, part A, want me to find? Just go to part A, read it to me. Start, start. You know, yeah. By the way, just to make it obvious, but you know, the blue won't have anything to do with your actual question. Just saying. Okay. What does it want us to find? Dakota, say it again. Yeah, it wants me to find AC, which means I'm not going to worry about a free body diagram or anything. I'm going to go straight to, well, AC equals, it's either going to be V squared over R or 4 pi squared R over T squared. Which one? And how do I know? Which one? How do I know? I can't hear you. I say that I missed that a lot. Why is it going to be 4 pi squared r over t squared? Give me the period. Okay. Mr. Duick, why isn't it m 4 pi squared r over t squared? It would be m 4 pi squared r if it said find the centripetal force, ma. But you said Dakota correctly. They just want us to find the centripetal acceleration. Well, Dakota, let's do a quick check. Tre quick check. Did they tell me the period in seconds? Did they give me the radius? Hey, no. Because this is a, tr often kids will say, isn't it 0.44? I think the radius, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that the radius? Did they give me that? But look what I just drew on the picture. Let's pick that up and redraw it. It seems to me what I've really actually just drawn is that with an R there and a 0.44 meters there and a 35 degrees there. So did they give me the radius? What I really should have said is not yet, but I think I can figure it out. That R, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Opposite, that 0.44. Hot news. Which trig function? Don't sin when you get this. Dustin? It's funny, all my other physics 12 classes got this one wrong, and I had to... Anyways, thank you for confirming that you can handle this. Sine of 35 equals opposite over 0.44. Dakota, how would I get the R by itself? I'm dividing by 0.44. How will I move it over? Could you do that all, please? I'm going to get this. R equals 0.44 sine 35. I'm going to, because I know I'm going to use this, I'm going to try and store this on my answer button, but I'm going to carry five sig figs anyways. I'm going to go 0 0.25237. 0 0.25237. And that's going to go in here. It's going to be 4 pi. I'm going to write 0 0.25237, but you know I'm going to use my answer button, yes? All over 1.2 squared. Four times pi times answer button divided by 1.2 squared. You get two point two. Oh, Mr. Duick, I forgot the pi squared. Thankfully, I can fix that. Multiply this by an extra pi. Do you get 6.918766.92? Uh, yeah. By the way, if we swung this faster, what would happen to the angle theta of 35 degrees? 
Would it get bigger, smaller, or stay the same? Can you ever get it to 90 degrees? Hmm. Let's come back to that. Hey, Dustin, what's uh, B want me to find? I think I would use VC equals 2 pi r over the period. 2 pi. And then you could use Ethan r equals 0.25237. Or you could even, because I can backspace a couple of lines, I might just store that in my answer. I might go 0 0.44 sine 35 because it's probably less typing anyways, and just store it. But regardless, it's going to be 2 pi times 0.25237. I'm going to use my answer button over 1.2. Make sure you know where I got that. I pulled that right from the, that's from your formula sheet as well. And it's distance over time in disguise. 2 pi, answer button, divided by 1.2. Better double check this time, Mr. Duke. Nope, you didn't miss a squared this time. 1.32, I hope, I hope, I hope, meters per second. Dakota, have we done a free body diagram on this question yet? We didn't, didn't need to, they, so don't always think, oh, I've got to do a free body diagram. Read the question. But let's do one where we do need to do a free body diagram, Caleb. Example four. An object moves in a horizontal circle around the end of a string as shown. If the tension is 36 newtons, hmm. Thomas, what's A want me to find? Net force. Hmm. What's B want me to find? I think that's definitely a job for a free body diagram. Thomas, what are the forces acting on the 3.5 kilogram mass? Get the obvious one. What else? Am I going to go components here? No, because the circle itself is horizontal. Instead, I'm going to add these together. How might I add these together? Draw them. Draw the easiest one first. So I'm going to draw mg. And then I'm going to draw a test up there. And there is fc from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. I have a lovely right angle here. And I think I can safely say to Kiefer, color, color, color. Color, 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 color. What's A asking me to find? I don't see net force on my diagram or in my vector triangle. Or do I? Huh? <gasps> we always said winner minus loser equals F net, and since we're moving in a circle, we've been going winner minus loser equals FC, but FC is F net. It is the net force. So I'm going to find that. Thomas, FC, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. MG, adjacent. T, hypotenuse. Which trig function? It depends. Let's use tension to find FC, which means I'm going to go with those, which trig function, sign is correct. Have you seen the sign? So it's going to be sine of 18 equals opposite over hypotenuse. What did you say they're asking us to find? So let's get the FC by itself times by T. FC is going to be Sine, eight, you know what, let's do the tension first. It's going to be 36 sine 18. Which is what? Sine button didn't work. You get 11.12, 4, 6, that. Um, you could also, Thomas, and I would give you full credit, have used mg to find fc, but I will tell you, 
because I started making up tension and then I solved for what the mass had to be. If you use a mass of 3.5, you won't get exactly 11.12. I think you get 11.14. And the reason is when I calculated what the mass had to be for this to work, it wasn't exactly 3.5. It was 3.49 something, something, something. I, I did some rounding, okay? But I would give you full credit for either. And I didn't want to give you a mass of like nine decimals or something like that just so our answers were close enough. Anyways, we got 11.1. You would get 11.1 .1 to three sig figs, no matter which one you used. Newtons. Cool. Cool. James, what's B you want me to find? Yeah, we're back now. Mr. Duke, did you pick on me because I was going through a whole bunch of pages? And not no, I would ne <laughs> Please never do that. Sorry, what was that? The period, which is not quite the same as total time. But yeah, I know what you mean. Um, what did I find in part A? Hey, is there an equation for FC that's got period in it? Let's try that first. So I think what I would try for part B is I would say, I know that FC equals 4 pi squared r over the period squared. Can anybody see the sloppy mistake that I made? What? The M, a lot of students, because that acceleration equation is so complicated, they think, oh, that must be a force. No, it's an acceleration, so it's always MA. There has to be an M in front of all that. James, let's do a quick check. Did they give me M? Did they give me R? Did they give me FC? I know it. So let's get the T by itself. I think I would multiply the T to the top, divide the FC, that would give me a t squared. How to get rid of a squared? Well done. So you're telling me that t is going to be m4 pi squared r over fc all square root? Sure. Looks like m is 3.5, 4 pi squared. The picture gave me the radius, yay, 0.6, all over. I'm going to write 11.1, .1, but you all know I'm going to be using my answer button in the bottom there, yes? 3.5 times 4 pi squared times 0.6 divided by answer button. Oh, square root. That seems way too big. You get 2.73. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could I have also asked you to find the speed instead of the period? Yeah. So that's the conical pendulum, and you are going to possibly see one of those on your test. Or a banked curve, because I'm telling you, the free body diagram is the same. Can you go back to example one, please? Roller coaster loops. Don't write anything down just yet. I love, I love, I love roller coaster loops, but this question is so long. I will not give you a complete from the top of the first hill all the way through the loop analysis on your test, but this is cool. So we're going to do it here, and I'm going to give you a couple in the homework, but Dustin, it's just too much physical time to solve it for a single test question. What does it say? Does the roller coaster barely makes it around a vertical loop of radius four meters? Huh. Huh. Caleb, what does A want me to find? Distance or height? Say what you said. Height. Huh. Height. I'm trying to think of where we used height, and now I'm thinking, looking at this picture, is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? Is there a yucky, curvy path? I think, you know what I might try using? 
using, using, using. I think I'm going to try conservation of energy. I think I'm going to let Annika this be initial and at the top of the loop be final. And so for part A, Caleb, it's going to be K E initial plus P E initial equals K E final plus P E final plus I'm pretty sure they don't want me to include heat. Caleb, are any of these zero? Let's first of all assume we're starting at rest because it did say find the minimum hill, minimum height. So, okay. look at my final location at the top of that loop. Is my height zero? Is my height zero? I, I could rearrange everything. Trust me, I'm not going to, and you're going to see why. So, my next line, I would go, well, MGH initial equals a half MV final squared plus MGH final. I would smile a little bit, Caleb, because little kids and grown-ups could go on the ride. What am I trying to find? I'll get that by itself in a second, but let's look on the right-hand side and see if I got everything that I need. Do I know the speed at the top of the loop right there? Uh, no. Maybe I can figure it out. Let's come back to that. Do I know my height at the top of the loop here? Ready? That'd be clever. Caleb, what do I call that distance right there? What letter am I going to use? So, how far from here to here? From the center to the edge? Just what letter am I going to use? What letter am I going to use? What letter am I going to use? How far from the middle to the edge? How far from here to here? How far from here to here? So I can replace height with... I'm going to do that on the next line. So all of you can just put a plus sign G 2R. That's going to show up on the next line. But that V squared. Wait a minute, Caleb, at the top of the loop, what path am I tracing out? Is there a circle equation that's got a V squared in it? Let's try analyzing it as a circle. This is a job for us. So let's do a, I'm going to erase these radii. At the top of the loop, what are the forces acting on this car? Get the obvious one. What else? Which way? In the direction of the head. Right, Annika? I love reading your quizzes and the notes you make to yourself. I just smile. Best way to study. Learn from your mistakes. Make little angry notes. You won't do them again. Caleb, who's winning? Well, it's kind of a trick question. They, okay. So I'm going to do that equation right up here. It's going to be, it seems to me, mg plus fn equals m. And I'm definitely going to want the v squared over r because the whole point of this is, I don't know v squared. Caleb, what word did I underline in the original question? What word did I also put on the diagram right at this location. We are going to barely, in fact, we're going to be so close that you're almost going to feel like you're going to fall out of your seat. You're going to be feeling weightless. In which case, what's the normal force exactly as a number if I'm barely making it? So you can all go like this, put a little equals zero because of barely. And I get mg equals mv squared over r. Caleb, can little kids and grown-ups still go on this ride? Woohoo! Am I going to get my old friend Gurr again? 
And then I was going to square root, but then I, wait, 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 wait. I want a v squared by itself, so I'm not going to square root. I'm just going to say, hey, v squared equals ger, and I can plug that in to vf squared. So I'm going to get this. The g and the h initial drops down. h initial is what I'm trying to find. There's going to be a 0.5 instead of a 1 half. And v squared is ger. Mr. Duick, I'm scared. I'm scared too. What else cancels? Gee. Jeez. What does that mean? We've had this happen once or twice before. This means this roller coaster would work as is on the moon. If you were wearing spacesuits, it would, wouldn't have to change the height at all. It would work just fine. Or on Mars. Or if we somehow put this on the surface of the sun and insulated everything, it would work there too. This will work anywhere in the universe. So I end up with this. My initial height is equal to 0.5R plus 2R. Thomas, put your calculator away. What's 0.5R plus 2R in your head? Gather like terms. Point 0.5 plus 2. Kedra, help him out and give him a bit of a stink <laughs> eye. 2.5R. And Thomas, put your calculator away. What is the radius according to this question? In your head, what's 2.5 times 4? I'll give you a hint. It's 10. I'm not going to say I like this question, I like this question, I like this, because it's not going to be on your test. It's too long. But I love this question. Here's what I love. If you want to, you could put a little... Look at all the work that we did, starting out with conservation of energy, getting a complicated V, substituting it in, and you end up with such an elegant, you don't want to know what your initial height has to be to make it around the roller coaster? 2.5 times your radius. I bet you in the same way that we've all memorized G is 9.8 out of sheer laziness and tired of looking it up, I'm guessing that's one of the things that ride designers would just have at their fingertips and not bother looking it up. Maybe one of those things, you know, oh, just like F equals MA. I got it. Although this is minimum, minimum safe, barely making it. So you actually probably want to make it higher and give yourself some extra speed. How many of you have been on a roller coaster with a vertical circular loop before? How many of you have been on a roller coaster with a vertical circular loop before? Kyle has? Give me your hand up. Kedra has? Nobody else? Sorry, Kyle, and sorry, Kedra, none of you have. And the reason I know none of you have is you're all alive. Nobody goes on circular, vertical roller coaster loops. Really? Kedra, what's B want me to find? Ooh, where? At the? Yeah, Bob. Hey. Normal for job for a free body diagram. Right here, what are the forces? Get the obvious one. What else? Who's winning? What path are we tracing? We're going to get this equation here. We're going to get, I guess, the normal force minus mg equals, and I'm betting we're going to go with mv squared over r because that's what we used in the previous. How would I get the normal force by itself? Well, the normal force is going to be mg plus mv squared over r. Problem. I don't know v. This is v at the bottom of the loop, which Kedra, it seems to me, is actually v at the bottom of the hill. Is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? Is there a yucky, curvy path? I think I can find V by using conservation of energy. Everybody draw a line kind of like that. 
We're not going to need much room because I'm going to cheat a little bit. Kedra, here's my conservation of energy equation. The only difference is I think this time Caleb is correct. Potential final is also zero because we're on the ground. So I'm just going to write, hey, potential initial equals kinetic final. I'm going to write MGH initial equals a half MB final squared. Kedra, could little kids and grown-ups still go on this? Well, that's good. I'm going to get the V. Actually, I'm not going to get the V by itself. I think I'll cleverly get the V squared by itself since it's a V squared over here. And I get this. VF squared equals 2 G H initial. Problem. I don't know H initial. Or do I? What is H initial in terms of R? 2.5 times the radius. So you can make a little note here for H initial. That's 2.5 times the radius. And so I really get this. Vf squared equals 2 times g times 2.5 r. Thomas, without a calculator in your Thomas, without a calculator in your head, what's 2 times 2.5? I'll give you a hint. So I get this. 5 ger. I get my old friend ger again. And that's going to go... Here, I'm going to get the normal force equals mg plus m over r. But what's v squared the same as? 5 gerd. Oh, cool. Can you see in the second term, the r's cancel? And I end up with mg plus 5mg. Thomas, without a calculator, what is 1mg plus 5mgs? What's your normal normal that all of you are experiencing right now? Exactly how big is it? Yeah, imagine the free body diagram. What's it got to be the same size as? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. Another force. Okay, your normal normal is mg. How many g's are these people pulling at the bottom of the loop? Six. Oh, and that's minimum. That's if we're barely making it. We build a healthy safety. Eight, ten. None of you have been on a circular roller coaster loop. Now, the first ever roller coaster loop wasn't actually a roller coaster, but it was a circular loop. It was at Coney Island. I think it was in the 1880s. It was called a shoot the chute. It was like a water slide in that you climbed a winding stair to get to the top, and then you got on a cart at the top, and it just went straight down at the bottom. There was a circular loop. People got whiplash, nosebleeds. They blacked out. They had permanent ambulances and nurses stationed there, and people loved it. They couldn't get enough of it. It was the 1890s. People didn't quite have the same medical sensibility as we have now. But none of you have ever been on a circular vertical loop. What you have been on, this is purely nerd trivia. Don't write this down. You've been on what's called a clothoid loop. And a clothoid loop from the side looks way more like a lowercase written L. The fancy term Caleb in calculus, it is a loop of a constantly decreasing radius where the radius is actually an equation that gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And if you do that, there's not much acceleration at the top or at the bottom. It's pretty tame. The closer the loop from the side looks to a circle, the more Gs you'll pull. How many of you have been on California Screaming in Disneyland? That loop, Kyle from the side really looks like a circle. You pull some pretty good Gs in that one. 
But if you go just up the freeway for a couple hours to Six Flags Magic Mountain, they have a roller coaster, for example. It was built in the 1970s. I forget the name. I can even remember that it's painted white. It was the first multiple loop roller coaster. And if you look at them from the side, the loops look like this or even skinnier. They're, they're, they're heavy cloth white loops. Very, if you go on it, you don't feel many Gs when you're going through it at all. It's cool for the upside down effect, but the physiological, meh. So you would never go in a circular loop and design it that way. Because you'd be pulling six Gs. What's your homework? You can cross, uh, sorry, number one is good. Cross out two. Skip three. Four is good. Five is an example of the question we just did. It's the roller coaster loop. And so since the radius is 10, the height you're going to find is 10 times 2.5, which Thomas is now going to do in his head. What's 2.5 times 10? So I, already, I put that in brackets there. Just try and see if you can walk through the argument. It's a complicated argument because we did conservation of energy, GG, and circular motion. I'm not going to give you one that long on your test, though. Number six. Number six is even more challenging. This is tougher than I'll throw at you on the test because our initial speed... Oh, I'm sorry. It is zero. I take it back. This is good stuff as well. Seven I skipped. Eight is good, that's a conical pendulum. Nine is good, that's a conical pendulum. 10 is good, that's a conical pendulum. So eight, nine, 10, and 11, and 12. You can skip 13, but the correct answer, Dustin, is no, you can't ever get it to 90 degrees. And the reason is, if it was at 90 degrees, your free body diagram would have mg down and no counteracting force up it has to accelerate down. So you can, if you spin it really hard, you can get it to like 89 degrees, but you, you're never going to get it to nine. You can't. So anyway, but 14 is good. Put your pencils down, look up. <laughs> 